live from the studio of his parents' basement, the Have You Seen It podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Have You Seen It podcast. My name is Mason Ice. Sitting across me is the one and only Cash Kraus. But before we begin, if you guys could please be sure to smash that like button, comment below, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification as we drop videos here every single day. If you want to help support the podcast, join the YouTube membership for $1.99. Get special emojis of me and Cash and uh, badges each and every month uh, grow in the tiers. And if you join the second tier, uh, you will get all of our videos that we were that we pre-record all in one sitting each and every week. You'll get awesome. exclusive access. So with all that said, Cash, what are we reviewing today? It is here, Mason, finally. Yes. The Elvis biographical musical drama film. Just titled Elvis. Just Elvis. And, and need it be any more? <laughs> I, I say no. I, I say no. So. I think Elvis is People a... People are uh, saying this is the one. Uh, yeah, directed by Baz Luhrmann, a guy who does a lot of films like this. Mm-hmm. Very fantastical, uh, always musical, somehow inspired. Yeah. Uh, he directed Moulin Rouge, a lot of films. Romeo and Juliet, a film they forced me to watch in high school. <laughs> forced yes, me. they did. They forced everyone yeah. <laughs> against our will. Well, this is the guy that kind of made uh, Romeo and Juliet cool for kids oh. because... Leonardo DiCaprio said it. Yes, that he is. Is uh, is that the one with uh, Ethan Hawke as well? No, or is that a different one? That's there's so way too many Romeo and Juliets. That one, Ethan. That the one with Ethan Hawke is the, the one with Denzel, isn't it? Oh uh, yes, maybe. Yeah, no, Ethan Hawke is not in this one. Uh, but yes, Baz Luhrmann. It is a biographical about the aforementioned Elvis. If I don't know if you heard of him, uh, the King of Rock and Roll. No, never heard of him up yeah. until this point. Uh, <laughs> he was a fresh artist for me. Yeah, I came uh, to enjoy his music though. After I watched his film, I had no yeah, idea. Keep an eye on him because I, I think he might be Bob. Be pretty big. Yeah. Uh, it is well. It's kind of a co-biographical because it's kind of about Colonel Tom Parker. Yes, As Colonel well. Tom Parker, who's not a colonel. Not a colonel, not even a Tom. No, not even a Tom. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, lied about everything. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he's a pretty well-known piece of shit. I don't think yeah. this movie is proving anything. <laughs> no, know? nothing uh, that has not been touched up upon on history. Yeah, almost already. kind of makes him have some kind of redeeming quality in this, I think, at I some guess. point. I don't know why they did that, but... Uh, a big piece of shit, nonetheless. Yeah, absolutely. Played by Tom Hanks, who's even a bigger piece of shit. <laughs> gotta talk about it. Do you see Tom Hanks telling some guy to fuck I, off? That uh, was well, sweet. you know, he be, you don't bump his wife. Tom right? Hanks tells me to fuck off. I'm finding the nearest bridge and, and throwing jumping, myself off of jumping it. Jumping off of it, Because yes. what's there to live for knowing that Tom Hanks, who hates no one, no. he's never disliked a man uh, he's ever met, but he hates that guy now. He yeah. hates one guy. One guy. And it's the guy who got a little a too, little too handsy com- little too with his wife. Yeah, bumped his wife pretty hard. Uh, you know. Oh, got, I would have been pissed too. Yeah, yeah got to understand the pop rots. The pop, yeah. Well, and that's the thing. You know, that whole incident was unintentional, but still, like, you, you can't be bumping uh, people that hard, especially in you know she, she's an older older woman. On top of that, you know. Hell, yeah. I mean, that, it, that's such a. You want to knock her down? Just a shit. I mean, if a normal guy did that, just bumped your wife in the yeah. fucking street, you know, you throw hands. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, even if it was fucking Tom Hanks, you know, nicest guy in the world, he's going to get fucking pissed for and sure. And that he did. Well, we got to talk about this movie about Tom Hanks because this is the movie that almost stole Tom Hanks from us. Yes. If you recall. We oh, talked about I do this. recall. I think a little bit when it happened. Yeah, he the, got the old big C little he V. He was one of the first uh, celebs. He was. And he said, that shit's so good, I'm taking it to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> that he did. And, uh, man, I remember when he got it, we were all worried for Tom Hanks. Because uh, he was literally the, er, an early celeb. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was when people were like, what? If Tom Hanks can get it, the guy who will protect no matter what. Right. You know? I mean, uh, he'll live to be 140 because we won't let him die. If that guy can get it, that'd be a serious thing. Yeah, it was uh, definitely a big deal. Definitely a big deal. Yeah, they had to shut down the whole production and everything like that for, uh, for him and his wife got it. <laughs> yeah, Rita did too. Yeah, Rita Wilson, yeah. Who <laughs> maybe that's why he's so overprotective of her these days. Yeah, he's like, hey, look, my wife got I was big lost little me, man. I can't lose her again. <laughs> yeah. But let's talk about who everyone's yes. talking about. Austin Butler. Austin Butler, who is now stuck talking like Elvis Presley in all the interviews I've seen. Are you serious? You haven't seen that yet? No, I haven't. I don't know if he's still doing it. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. But, he's gonna be he's gonna be like a Heath Ledger, but Elvis. 
Yeah, I guess he was doing it for so long that now he is, uh, he's stuck talking, <laughs> like, oh, with no. a southern accent. Just such a stupid actor thing to yeah, fucking... <laughs> it definitely is. It definitely is. But, I mean, God, what a career this guy has had. He's got to work with some of the best. I mean, being Elvis, like, what an honor that is. Not even that, but you know where Working he started with out? Quentin Tarantino as well. Hannah, Hannah Montana. Montana. And I know that because my sister yeah. was obsessed. Probably had a huge crush on him. Well, he's uh, only in a few episodes. He's only got a couple episodes, so not very, not very long yeah. at all. But, uh... Oh, yeah. there he is. Well, and he plays, uh... He plays Tex Watson in Once Upon in, uh, a Time, yeah, which Quentin is a Tarantino's. very small role. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this is his breakout role. Right? Oh, absolutely. And I actually, I got to be honest here, in all seriousness, I thought he did a great job as Elvis. Like, yeah. I, I enjoyed his performance quite a bit. I think my only complaint was that I wish they aged him a little bit more at some point. It goes through yeah. two decades, and he never ages at all. I would say the but only time they aged him the was very, at the very end of the, the film very, when they put on some weight But 20 years, he looks the same as a 19-year-old as he does a 40-year-old. That I do agree with. You know, I wish, yeah. yeah, and I wish they would add it a little more, a little more weight earlier <clears throat> on. Yeah, because Austin Butler is a very skinny dude. Yes, and Elvis Presley was a big fucking guy. He was fucking huge towards midway through his career. Yeah, yeah. he was, uh, he was he definitely was, putting. He on was the tall though too. too. He was yeah. pretty tall. He was a, a you know a towering force for sure. Oh, he got so fucking fat at one point, <laughs> and he had the craziest appetite. People talk about that all the time. Yeah. Like he had the craziest fucking appetite. Well, I mean, when you're when you're at Vegas, you got the the Las Vegas buffets. You know, nonstop. <laughs> well, at one point, he wasn't even food, leaving his house. It was, it was that. Uh, yeah, it's uh, the rough. food coming from the hotel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so because he wasn't leaving the room for a while. No. <laughs> yeah, he was just getting huge. Uh, and popping those pills, of course. Yeah, popping them big time. Yeah. But this film, I, I, I like this film. I enjoyed it uh, for a musical biographical. You know, those are hit and miss sometimes for yeah. me. But I think this is the way. I like the fantastical element to it. The bigger than life, you know, mm-hmm. the some things that... I, it's a lot, though. So, uh, I, I know I've told you this, but I went and saw Black Phone, and then I saw this. So, that's six hours of straight film, like, between the trailers and everything else. But... So, like, I have very little patience going into a second film. This one was fucking When it's long, two too. hours and 40 minutes. But I got to be honest, man, I completely enjoyed the ride here. And I had a lot of fun with this. Uh, I, I really enjoyed just seeing kind of every facet of Elvis Presley's life. Uh, I loved it. I really, I, I, this is one of my favorite films this year. Really? Yeah. Wow. Really. I, yeah. I don't think I liked it as much as you, but that's, uh, that's pretty, that's pretty big. Yeah. I thought, uh, I enjoyed it, but I thought, th- it rushes through some things and slows down through so, the pacing. Is kind I of do like, agree with that. Like, the pacing is weird. It will rush through such a large part of his life and mm-hmm. then slow down for 50 minutes on the Christmas special. Yes. <laughs> Which was what? A week and a half of his life. <laughs> right. A week and a half. But you know, that was also, you know, the whole political big, side of things. A big moment a for big sure. Moment. But yeah. it's, it speeds. And even, it's even kind of weird in the film. Cause at one point in the film, he even ta- says something along the lines of like, He's like, back in the beginning of my career, but in movie time, it was 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's sped through so much in like those 10 minutes. It went from like him joining the army to him, his career over. They <laughs> like, definitely like, fast forward the, the army scene. now. Yeah. Yeah. It went from him, which is crazy because at first we spent so much time pre army, mm-hmm. which was fucking wild. I mean, because that's like, because I feel like, as far as I know, Elvis really b- blew up post army. Yeah, like he got really fucking big, but uh, but yeah, they, they really examined the hips, the the hip movements for a long time. That was a, a it's huge so part funny. of this film. It's so funny, and that's that's something that's very iconic about El- Elvis Presley too. Is like he really lived rock and roll in two completely different eras: before the '60s and then after the '60s. Yeah. you know where it was like moving your hips is satanic and it's of the devil and it's witchcraft. Oh, riots were starting. To then you People's start seeing like Black exploding. Sabbath in the '60s, the Rolling Stones, Zeppelin, well, just the Beatles like, and everything too when they came. Yeah. yeah, well, it was crazy how fast it moved because that's he went from being revolutionary mm-hmm. to being a dinosaur yep. in the span of a decade and a half. Like uh, it's wild, time it, moved fast. Yeah, I mean yeah. for music back then for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, but yeah, yeah, he went from you know being like cutting edge to being like. People don't want to see him that much anymore. Yeah. And that's the thing that kind of bothered me was it moves so fucking fast between that those two moments mm-hmm. of him being so popular to 10 minutes later, him being like, he doesn't even have a career anymore. Right? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. As that, an audience, I'm like, 
what did we what, what did I miss? I wanted here? to see why he did yeah, it. Or yeah. like go through more of like what was happening early in those sixties, obviously Vietnam and all this. But kind you of gotta stuff show so many but... of those those edits. Yes. The the, 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 the fancy uh, CGI edits that are through the entire thing of making it look like a casino. <laughs> <laughs> the the transitions from one scene to another as you're like going through a roulette machine. Because that's what Colonel Tom Parker, he lived his life in a casino. Most, right. I mean, yeah. literally and figuratively. Yes. He, he spent all his time gambling, and then he actually lived in a casino. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, I, you I know. Liked, I would have liked to see more of that nineteen early 1960s when JFK was assassinated. They did touch up on Robert Kennedy and MLK getting yeah, assassinated. Yeah, but it's quick. But, Man, they moved through that quick. Yeah. It's one scene. Uh, it's Yeah, it's like one scene JFK is getting killed, and then 10 minutes later... It's MLK getting killed, which yep. is, was five years later. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it just it moves, and then immediately Bobby Kennedy getting killed. Yep. Like it, it just there are some pacing things that move very quick, and then some things that just slow down from like very small moments of his life, but spend fifty minutes on easily. Yeah, it's sure. it, it's a long film. It is long. It is uh, two hours and forty minutes. Two hours and forty minutes. Yeah, one of the longer films, uh, probably the longest film we'll see this year. Yeah, in the first in half, America, in and the life. first. Uh, First half hour, Colonel Tom and Elvis don't even talk to each other. No. You never even see Elvis really until 35 minutes in, which I didn't mind. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of uh, allure and mystery behind, like, who the fuck is this guy that's about to blow up? Something I didn't mind, something that I liked, actually appreciated a lot, was they did not shy away the fact that he stole all of these things, all of these gimmicks and everything from black people. That's that's what I like, too. Uh, like they, they did very not, glad that they showed that. And they didn't shy away from... Which everyone knows at this point. Well, of course, sure. absolutely. Black people were doing everything he was doing 20 years later. Yep. And it's funny in this movie, because there's a moment when they're like, so what? It's just another... Because they're only hearing his record. They don't mm-hmm. see what he looks like yet. They're like, so what? Just another, uh, another black guy singing, you know, this rock and roll we've heard a million times. And he's like, no, he's white. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. And then Colonel Tommy just his whole world melts away. He goes, What did you just say? Mm-hmm. He's white. He just keeps yep. repeating it. He's white. He's white. We finally got one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so literally all that had to be was just some white guy keep come up here and do the same thing that black people were doing. Yep. And and finally white people were like, Oh, we can listen to this now. Now it's we just, can it's so crazy, uh, dude. It's yeah. so crazy to have that mentality. And they they touched up a lot of like segregation and what was going on before, you know, the civil rights movement. Uh and it's I those were those were elements that I really, really enjoyed about this film too, is because like as you said, it did not shy away from that kind of stuff, you know. And it shouldn't, because it was a big part of Elvis Elvis's career. Some would say everything. Lit, for sure. I mean, and that's I mean that's just that's a fact. That's, yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, and it's just, and he, I don't think he ever shied away from it either. I mean, no, he, he literally didn't. took, um, most of his most popular songs were songs that black people were singing for a long time. Yep. He literally just, I just took him. Even at one point, uh, there's little Richard is in this for a very small yeah, amount of singing two or three. Maybe, yeah. uh, I don't know, maybe even played by a woman at that point. I did not yeah. know. but uh, I don't know. But B.B. King as well. Yeah. That's a B.B. King. But Little Richard is in it, and he's singing Too Fruity. And Elvis, as soon as he hears Too Fruity, he immediately goes, man, I should record that. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> he says that. Like, he's, yeah. not, he's not shy no. about it at all. Well, you know, I don't think... Um, I don't think plagiarism was a big thing back then or, uh, you know, copyright or anything like that. Well, I mean, I think it was a big thing that, like... Uh, these artists would still be getting paid for it and their music. Cause at that time, you know, their music is just not going to be getting out. It's not, I mean, just cause the racism is so fucking strong in America <laughs> that people, even if you are the greatest artist in the world, BB like King and on yeah. all these fucking guys, Fat Stomp and all these guys, people would just not listen to it. Which is just wild. Because, yeah. It's just crazy. Uh, so I was came along and said, I'll just, he showed the world, I guess. Yeah. And the, the way he dances and everything was taken from, mm-hmm. you know, Oh, everything was inspired. Yeah, yeah. for sure. But, uh, but yeah, it was smart that they did not shy away from that because they could have easy have, and that's what I think every Elvis biopic has done in the yeah. past. But uh, they definitely made a point to show you that it was all inspired of people that came before him. Yep. Wait, and it was it was because the the crazy circumstance of the crazy time his dad was thrown in prison for a false check. It was over like sixteen dollars. It was fucking <laughs> insane. That is wild, man. Uh, yeah, but we, of course, we throw away, we lock people up for a lot. <laughs> for marijuana <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're the yeah. same thing. Uh, but yeah, and so as he was forced to grow up in a, uh, 
you know, with the black community for sure. Cause he was, they were super fucking poor. So that was yeah. the whole reason, you know, it, uh, he owed a lot to that community for sure. I would yeah. say pretty much his whole career. And you know, he, uh, and it made a point that he was very into and concerned about Martin Luther King and stuff like that yep. too, which were, I thought the best moments of this film for sure is when, is when he hears about those things and he is, uh, very upset, but Colonel Tom Parker could care less yep. about, uh, it's funny because he's like, no he, political, no, he's like, you don't have any kind of opinion at all. And at least the way the film uh, made it seem is that, you know, obviously Elvis being the biggest rock and roll star probably had a big influence, you know, on the civil rights movement oh, and stuff sure. like yeah. just going and, and showing up and, and hanging out, you know, when, you know, it was segregation back then, you know, yeah. like he would go to those bars and whatnot and just hang out and have a good time and sing and, and watch people, you know, like little Richard sing and whatnot. So. Yeah. Yeah. That was a big fucking no, no for sure. Well, I mean, he grew up in Memphis too, you know, right. which is, it's the South, you know, so that's, yep. that's any, and he started out at Sun Records, which was a, like an all black label. <laughs> I mean, like yeah. that was like, that was uh, ran by a white guy, but uh, it, it was mostly sung. I mean, mostly signed with the, uh, yeah, black artist. So. Yeah, it was interesting. I think if I liked Elvis a lot more, you know, I, I like Elvis, you know, I think yeah, everyone. Yeah, of course I, everyone likes Elvis. I don't think Elvis. you're going to see. Yeah. yeah. But I am not like a diehard Elvis fan. Neither and I, I think that's why it's probably not doing. I think it's, I don't know, you know, it's an older generation for sure. And this older generation is not going to the movies like they used to. Yeah. So I think that's probably a big reason of why it's hurting at the box office right now. But but for me with with Elvis and I totally agree. I'm not some like mega fan. I might be able to name you ten songs of Elvis outside of that. Like when I drove home, I was listening to Top Thirty and I realized I don't know like fifteen of these songs. <laughs> I can name you all yeah. his most popular songs, of yeah. course, that everyone fucking knows. But yeah, but I don't know a deep cut. I think he's a cultural icon the same way like Marilyn Monroe is. You know where it's like you know who Elvis. Everyone on planet Earth even now knows who Elvis yeah. Presley is. You know it's really hard to find someone go up to him and be like, Have you ever heard? of Elvis Presley yeah yeah duh, obviously have you ever heard of Marilyn Monroe well yeah duh, obviously so like for me going and seeing this film and kind of see his whole life kind of played out on the big screen and done in a really well way that I, I, I find myself really enjoying I was I was happy with it you know I was, I was really happy to see this film just to know a little bit more about Elvis and the inner workings yeah I just don't think uh yeah you're just not getting a young audience at all for this film Typically, for sure yeah you're just getting that older, you know, my, my mom's going to take my grandma to see this. My grandma's fucking pumped, you know. She's yeah, could not be course. more excited, of course. Yeah. But, yeah, that's that's why. And it, but a very expensive film, and it looks very expensive as well, yes. you know. All Baz Luhrmann's films look very Moulin Rouge, and everything looks very expensive. So it's a big risk. But you're getting, you got a young guy like Austin Butler, who at times, I mean, there's times when he's looking down and start anywhere he looks very much like Elvis. Yeah. Just identical. And he has, he's got the movements down, and I think it's, I think he also adds a little something of his own to the character as well. It's not just like a, a mirror image right. of Elvis Presley, like Rami Malek did yeah. for uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. yeah, which was just, you know, scene for scene, just exactly him. You know, just, uh, I think he gives a little bit more of something, that, but he's got, uh, He's got the Elvis heart for sure, man. I mean, yeah, it's, he, he puts a lot into it too. My favorite, one of my favorite scenes in this whole thing was uh, when you know, obviously Tom Colonel Tom is is telling him, you know, just do do what you got to do, boy, do what you got to do. You can't, you yeah. can't. You know, and he's at the baseball field and he starts the song, and then they do kind of the image, the shot for shot, like that famous video of him swinging his hips and yeah, like pulling yeah. out. That, that was the coolest that was moments, cool. too, when it blended elements of like him in Actual real footage. life. or what, yeah, like that, photos. Like that photo of him and B.B. King outside yes, of the... Outside like, of the uh, uh, yeah, club. on the stoop or whatever, yep. like what they're on. Like that. I've seen that photo a million times, too. And like, uh, But yeah, I thought that... I, I was hoping he was going to rub shoulders with even more famous people. We I get, thought we were going to get more yeah, famous people, lot, too. Yeah, yeah, a lot more of that, because he talks about like working with James Dean. Mm-hmm. I mean, never get. Not <laughs> I mean, one. unfortunately, that's why it, I did think it was cool to see like Priscilla Presley, which uh, she's been in a ton of stuff. She became an actress at some point, yep. and uh, she's very famous. Uh, well, we actually got a lot of their relationship too, you know, and uh, it kind of met a very, very sad ending uh, for them. You know, obviously they got divorced because of Elvis, you know, and his uh, his pill problems. Yeah, I wish there was even a little bit more to that. Their their element of it did kind of subtly like just. 
Yeah. Out of nowhere. <laughs> I know yeah. they were so happy in one scene. I know. The next scene, the next they, scene. <laughs> she's throwing pill bottles at Yeah, him. one point she's like, I don't care about you sleeping around. I'm like, well, when did that change yeah. happen? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, man, this change really happened fast. Yeah, at one point, they were very much in love. Yeah. Like, this is just each other. And then at one point, he's just fucking everyone. Not a lot of development there. No, I wish we would have seen, like, them happy together. I mean, it's, like, very rarely you, you even saw that. Yeah. You saw him early on when they are like, on the base. Yeah. It's like he was trapped there. Of course he's going to fuck. He's going he's gonna to give us someone. Uh, but, yeah, I wish you would have saw a little bit more... Uh, of that, but Tom Hanks, I thought he he killed it. He does a, a I don't know what the original Colonel Tom Parker sound like, but he's doing an accent here and he's dedicated to oh, it. Oh, he is definitely dedicated to Greasy yeah. hair. He says <laughs> everything. Uh yeah, that guy's a big piece of shit. Any colonel is I mean, because these guys aren't colonels in the army. That's right. just a title that you can get in in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. They just give that title out to like powerful white guys. Yeah. Uh but yeah, any guy named Colonel that never served is a fucking prick. Is an asshole for sure. And they all really kind of looked alike. And man, he had a very long life too. 1909 to 1997. Yeah, look at that That's original. Crazy. Look at his real name though. Andreas Cornelius von <laughs> Kujic. That was one thing that that was so fucking weird was he held so much power over uh over Elvis, but he had to have been signing all these contracts in, in his Fake name. Yeah. None of these contracts would be uh, a hold up in a court of law. <laughs> yeah, if Elvis only would have known more. Elvis <laughs> never fought back with that, I guess. Not one time. He never no. thought, maybe I'll get my own lawyer and maybe take a look at this. Because this guy was a fucking, there was no evidence that he even was around, that he lived. I know. And and he, do all managers have to be just <laughs> horrible, <laughs> shitty people? Do they all have to be bad? Is there one good manager out there? Uh, no, no, not not maybe yeah. maybe these days. I mean, but not not post, not pre two thousand fourteen. I would say there's never been. Uh, and he was taking Elvis for a fucking ride. But yes, yeah. he was. There's so many fucking stories of shitty managers there with like the Beach Boys and like uh, just everyone has a, a story of a shitty fucking manager that yeah. just takes these guys and ruins their lives mm-hmm. mentally, physically. I mean, uh. But yeah, I thought Tom Hanks did a good job, though. Yeah, yeah. You don't see him as a bad guy very often. No, not very often. But I did, I did actually enjoy his performance quite a bit, and I could not stand Colonel Tom. And he was always weaseling his way back in with Elvis. He's a snowman. He found, yeah, he is a snowman. Just makes a snow. Only in the fifties would that be like. Everyone is like okay with that. Like the snowman is a term for snowing people, which mm-hmm. is a term for screwing people. Yes. But everyone is so proud that this guy calls himself the snowman. Crazy. Basically going around calling himself a carn artist. Mm-hmm. Uh, people are like, he's the best in the biz, though. You got to love him. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, he flipped everything around on Elvis. But Elvis, my guy. Someone shake this guy. I mean, someone wake this guy up. You could tell this guy anything. And he's... He got Elvis. Elvis was originally supposed to be at at Vegas for six weeks. Mm -hmm. Ended up being there five Five years. years. (laughs) A million a year, but, uh, you know, Tom blew all that in the casino. How convincing do you have to be for that? Security. Security. Elvis, security. You can't do anything. Five years. Could you imagine doing a show six nights a week for five years? Well, it's on straight because he did the 15-city tour every year. Oh, that is true. The same 15 cities every Fucking years. It would just. But that 15 tours was over the course of 15 days, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, and then he would go back to the yeah. hotel for the full Yeah, but year. when you do those Vegas things, it's not for like a full year straight. It's it's maybe like six months or something, but still, it's, it's five shows a week for yeah. six months straight. You know, it's wow. fucking. It's crazy. Yeah. The International Hotel, which I don't even think is in Las Vegas anymore. No, it is. Uh, and I actually looked up the International Hotel after this, but I yeah, guess it's it's on Old Vegas now. And it's not. I don't even think it's named. I don't think it's called. Hotel. I don't think there is an International Hotel anymore. No. But that is where he did uh, a lot of shows. A lot of fucking shows at the International Hotel. I know. It's so crazy uh, how they how they go through. Oh, it's the Westgate now. The Westgate. That's right. Yeah, Westgate. Yeah. Yeah. Westgate. yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, those hotels, you know, once the mob got out. I love it. Here's that famous photo of Elvis, the uh, Elvis inter- uh, Elvis sign, yep. the International, which I thought they did a good job of reenacting that or re 
digitally remaking this. Yeah, they did a good job of uh, of making it look like old Vegas for yeah. sure. Yeah, I thought they did it, uh, a really good job. Yeah, that would have been so cool to go to that fucking show, man. <laughs> yes, God it would have. damn. He was, would have been awesome. Biggest fucking star in the world. He was doing shows six days a week, man. You, tickets probably weren't that expensive. No, probably 10 bucks. And it was, I mean, it's crazy, too, because when he's like, this this venue's huge. It's like 100 tables. It's not that I big. Know. It's not that big at all. It's pretty, uh, pretty intimate setting, for sure, yeah. to see Elvis, but... Again, that was just Colonel Tom just absolutely <laughs> screwing him. Only because he had a crazy debt, too. Crazy gambling habit. And then yeah. he tried to charge him $8 million for all of this That was shit. a crazy thing, going back it's 20 wild. years to, to, to making him pay for the gas of going to the first show that they did. <laughs> crazy. He knew every single thing, too, because, of course, he was thinking about that the entire time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If he ever leaves, I got someone on this. Elvis just said, okay. <laughs> I can't do anything about this. My hands are tied. No. And his dad was the weakest fucking... I don't, oh, he's such a weak man. I don't know if uh, if that was accurate about his dad, but, I mean, th- the family has to be sour if that's not true because this dad was the biggest pussy in the world. Yeah. Oh, my God. He was the worst dad in the world. He, he had zero good advice for uh, for Elvis. It's brutal. Yeah, it is. And his mom, there's some sexual tension between him and his mom for sure. Oh, she died young too, man. Elvis Presley's mom died uh, real, yeah. real young. It would have looked at you. It would have been on that page for sure. Momo? Uh, Gladys Presley. Oh, there she is. Well, a little overweight. I mean, that'll happen. A little drunk, too. A little drunk, too. Yeah, I had an alcohol problem. She That's... never looked good. Oh, my for God. Sure. Look at that picture of Elvis kissing her. Yeah, dude. Look at those sunken in eyes and everything. Jeez. Yeah, look at that dad, too. Dad looks yeah, Dad don't look happy. <laughs> Oh, she's a little better there. Oh, look, that's little baby Elvis. She's a lot better there. She looks like shit right there. God, does she ever smile? No, it's just the alcohol poisoning, bro. When you drink that much alcohol, <laughs> you're liver not happy. failing. Yeah. I can't believe he turned out so good looking. I know his parents are not very it's good looking. Oh, dunk fucking. Uh, just farming nobodies. I know he got lucky. That's for sure. <laughs> that is for sure. God damn. No. Yeah, now I get like a bunch. Yeah, Maggie Gyllenhaal was originally going to play her. That would have been weird. Because um, originally there had to have been more to that part, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, because there's not a lot there. But he loved his mom. Yes, he did. There's Maggie Gyllenhaal right there. Yeah. Aww. She would have had to put in some pounds, Maggie Gyllenhaal. 50? <laughs> 75? <laughs> she would have had to wear a fat suit, which... Now, uh, people are very upset that actors wear fat suits. And I'm like, are we not allowed to act anymore? Well, fuck it. For Austin Butler to secure the Oscar this year, he needed to actually gain the weight. That's always, people love that. When, oh, they love it. When <laughs> actors go the extra when mile and putting gain their the body weight, on the losing. line, when every doctor is like, don't do this. Don't it's do not it. healthy. You can't Christian Bell, it. you cannot lose any more weight for Christian, the machine. If you want to gain 50 pounds in 20 days, you'll kill yourself. You will kill it. You're going to have a stroke or a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. Please do not do this. But. Uh, the fucking Academy loves it. Oh, you can be the shittiest actor and you gain 50 pounds for a role. They will nominate you at yeah. least. But he should gain the weight a little bit. What's so, wrong with these kids these days? I know. I know. Um, Christian Bale would have been sick to see this. Yeah, definitely would have been. But I thought they did a great job with uh, Tom Hanks' makeup. looked really good. Yeah, Tom um, Hanks' makeup looked great. Damn near unrecognizable. And he's in, like, really good shape these days, Tom Hanks. He's done gain weight, though, and... And losing it. It was all prosthetic for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, anything else on Elvis? No. Uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it as well. Yeah. Uh, it's probably, I don't think it's going to make my top 10 this year. But Really? I, yeah, definitely. Oh. Probably not. I don't know. It's a short year, so uh, we'll see. But yeah, I enjoyed it. I'd say it's probably worth going to. There's a couple films out there worth going to right now, so it's a good time uh, to go to the theater. Yeah. For sure. Absolutely. I enjoyed this one quite a bit. If you're an Elvis fan, you're going to fucking love yeah. this film. Like, if you're a really big Elvis fan, for sure. this is the film you've been waiting for because it's chock full of Elvis songs. I mean, the whole thing, the soundtrack is just, it's banging. All right, everyone. Well, that is our review for Elvis. If you like what you've seen here, please be sure to smash that like button, comment below, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification so we drop videos here every single day. Thanks so much for watching and listening. My name is Mason Knight. That is Cash Krause, and until next time. Bye.